When you look at a boiler manufacturer's catalog, you're going to see three things that they give you in, in terms of ratings. One is called input, and that's the actual heat that comes out of the flame. So the input is, is the value of the natural gas or the fuel oil. Uh, back in the days of, of coal, it was harder to figure because the coal varied by uh, where it came from, the type of coal, the size of the coal, uh, the quality of the coal. But with, with propane and natural gas and fuel oil, it's pretty straightforward. So that's the actual heat that's coming out of the flame. Some of that's going to be lost up the chimney and through the boiler jacket. So what's left over it used to be called the gross rating, but then the Department of Energy stepped in and took over the name. So they now call it the Department of Energy Heating Capacity. And this is the stuff that's left over to go out to the building after we've taken the losses through the chimney and through the boiler jacket. So when you look at a boiler manufacturer's rating and it, and it gives you uh, an efficiency rating, say it's 80%, that, that means that 20% of the, of the heat is lost up the chimney and through the jacket. And it's a questionable thing whether the heat that's lost through the jacket is actually lost to the building because chances are the boiler is inside the building. So there's some controversy there. But this is what's available to go out to the system. So that's the actual load of steam that now has to heat not only the radiators, but the pipes between the boilers and the radiators. So it has to take this, this massive amount of, of steel and bring it from ambient temperature up to 215 degrees, and that's going to require energy. So that's the pipes are going to cause steam to condense. That's why we insulate pipes, so, so the condensing is limited, because we want the steam at the radiator, not in the pipes that are in the, inside the walls or down in the basement. So by the time we get out to the radiators, what's left over, what didn't die on the way to the radiators, is called the net rating. And this is the actual rating that's going to be there for the radiators. So when you measure the radiators in the building, trying to figure out what size boiler you need, you're coming up with the net rating. Now to this, manufacturers have traditionally added what's called a pickup factor. So they take net times a factor of 1.33. And when you add that together, that gives you this, the DOE heating capacity. So net plus 1.33 is a DOE heating, heating capacity. What to keep in mind, though, is that in the early days of, of steam heating, the heating capacity for both steam and hot water systems was, was figured at 1.56. So it was a lot bigger than what we have these days. This all changed uh, after World War II. Uh, they lowered it to 1.33 for both steam and hot water. And then in 1967, they further lowered the pickup factor for hot water to 1.15, where it stands today. And they, low, and they kept it the same for steam at 1.33. But it makes me wonder, if I'm working in a building that was built in, say, 1890 or 1900, and it has the original steam radiators and steam piping, is this 1.33 pickup factor sufficient to heat that building since it's built into the boiler manufacturer's catalog? So that's a question to ask. And it gets worse if they've removed asbestos insulation and they're not replacing it with fiberglass because then the heat load of the pipe actually increases by five times. So you have a lot more pipe to heat up to temperature and often a boiler that you use to replace the boiler that's there may not be big enough even though it's the same size. So then too, what happens if you're on the job and you notice that radiators have been removed? Notice the radiators are no longer there, so in your radiator survey, for purposes of sizing the replacement steam boiler, you can't measure a radiator that's not there. But the piping that served that radiator is still there. So the pickup factor should be larger than 1.33. When I see missing radiators like this, what I'll do is figure the, uh, the actual radiation that I'm measuring and substitute the manufacturer's built-in 1.33 pickup factor with my own, which would be 1.5, and then I would select the boiler, not from the net column, but from the Department of Energy Heating Capacity column. And that usually is enough to make up the difference.